All right, well, let's do a sound check. Can, can people in the back of the room hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Let me check and see how this is going. Okay, well, my name's Dan Brennan. I'm a long doctor down at VCU. I've been there for about seven years. And uh, the topic today is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, to give a little bit of background, so my, my job is in pulmonary and critical care medicine, like all pulmonologists, which means a lot of the times we'll see people in clinic that have different types of lung conditions, and a lot of the times we're in the intensive care unit where people can come in with absolutely anything and you see them in that moment. Um, so, like with anything, with, with uh, talking about pulmonary fibrosis, some of it comes from expertise in pulmonary fibrosis, and then sometimes it comes from perspectives in the ICU that I will share in general. So, um, I, I won't. Uh, tell everyone here that I'm an expert in pulmonary fibrosis. It's part of the job of all pulmonologists. I am involved in some clinical research with pulmonary fibrosis. Um, I think it's a challenge to try to get a talk that's going to tell everyone in this room exactly what they're hoping to them. I know I'm going to miss the mark. So what I thought would probably be more useful, this talk is on the shorter side. I think I have you know, about 20-something slides that I've prepared, but I'll plan to stop. And, uh, and see what questions people have, because that's really been the fun part of this in the past when I've been here before. So what I hope the, the talk part does is just sort of piques everyone's interest in this and maybe get you to think of a couple <coughs> questions. Then I'll do my best to answer and I'll, I'll tell you up front that somewhere around 3 o'clock I'll have to disappear to get back downtown in time for the 3 o'clock meeting that they already know I'll be waiting for. So, <laughs> so, such are things. So, where to start? Well, okay, I'm going to start um, trying to explain to everyone here some things, you know, and some people in this room, there will be nothing new in this talk, and for that I'm sorry, but for other people, I hope it will be really interesting. And one of the confusing things I think about this is what exactly is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? So instead of centering on prognosis, stages, treatments, we'll get to some of those things, but just figuring out what is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis I think is really important. And part of the reason it's really important, does, does anyone here know what this word means? Because we use it a lot from, from the doctor side, idiopathic. I have no clue. Okay, perfect. Well said. Um, so four words from the back, I have no clue. So that's really important to keep in mind when we talk about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis because how do you prognosticate a condition that you don't understand? How do you stage it? How do you, how do you treat it? So it has to be a part of what we talk about today is what is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? It's a type of interstitial lung disease. Well, I've lost half the people in the room again, so I'm going to go back and tell you what interstitial lung diseases in just a minute. It's poorly understood on our side. There are few treatment options. And there's escalating interest in it as a topic. So these are things that I think you should know sort of right up front. This, I know the words aren't going to project to the back, but I'll try to sort of explain what's going on. Now I'll probably shut the whole thing up. Okay. So there. Can everyone see the laser pointer in the back? I'll just use this. Okay. That's uh, fine. Maybe if the if you know how the, the ones just in the front, that might be perfect to, to just help a little bit. But um, when we talk about the interstitium of the lung, because I use this this term interstitial lung disease. What you have to realize is that if you could take a, well, if you could take a chunk out of the lung and look at it under a microscope, then you would see if you could construct it three-dimensionally, these end branches, after the airways have branched 24, 25 times, you come to these tiny airways called the bronchioles. And then at the very end are air sacs that we call alveoli. And around that yaw line, 
This is sort of what separates these different air sacs. It's called the interstitium. You have millions of these air sacs, we all do. And it shows you here that this layer that's separating these two alveoli has this thing called the interstitium in it. And on the right, it has an example of scarred interstitium where it's a little bit thicker. And it shows you that what has to happen in this interstitium, there are different types of cells and there's some blood vessels going through as well. And oxygen has to diffuse from those air sacs into the interstitium to the blood vessels going, bringing blood by. And carbon dioxide has to get from this interstitium back out of the lungs and out of our mouths. That's what happens every breath. So this interstitium is sort of the, the smallest architecture of the lungs that's all around these alveoli or air sacs. So a complicated term, idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. Doctors use this term, but really it's pulmonologists that use this term. If, if I ask um, most of the residents that are downtown, what does idiopathic interstitial pneumonias mean? They get a really worried look because they aren't quite sure. And that's okay. The only reason that I bring this up is to let you know that the first thing up here, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, is technically part of these idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. What, what that means, if you think about what we've said so far, idiopathic means we aren't sure exactly why it started. Interstitial means it affects these layers between the alveoli. And then pneumonia isn't like you think. You think a pneumonia is an infection. But this is different. This is thinking of something that's causing abnormalities or inflammation within the lung. I just bring it up because there are other terms here as well that are very similar to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, yet at the same time very different. they are probably terms that uh, people haven't heard before, nonspecific interstitial pneumonitis, desplomative interstitial pneumonitis. These are not as common as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But it's important to realize that not everything that causes scarring within the lungs is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. All these things that are down here, these can present very similarly, but they can look different when you look at pictures of the lungs and there may be clues as to how to separate. It's one of the real challenges of being a pulmonologist is how to make this diagnosis correctly, especially many of the things that are down on this list will respond very well to courses of prednisone. We'll talk about later idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is not. So it's a trick to make sure that the diagnosis is done correctly. There are other things that are called granulomatous interstitial lung disease. So still things that can affect this layer of the lung, this interstitium. And People may have heard of, have people heard of sarcoidosis? Show of hands if you've heard of it before. So it's fairly common. I can tell you that um, at VCU, we have over 700 people in our pulmonary clinic with sarcoidosis. So it's common in the Richmond area. Um, but all of these things, this term granulomatous, it's a type of healing, and it's an abnormal type of healing. Like you breathe something in, and then the immune system responds with an abnormal healing response and causes one of these types of granulomatous interstitial lung diseases. But it's starting to realize that idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is one of many different problems that can affect this type of, uh, this part of the lung. And then there are other interstitial lung diseases. Of course, it's probably not a surprise, certain medications can cause it. Um, the most common one now is amiodarone which is a medicine used to control heart rhythms. It's a fantastic medicine. Um, it's made huge differences in cardiology. It is used, it should be used. This is a rare problem where it causes fibrosis in the lungs, but it, it can. There are certain toxins like asbestos, silica, other types of things that can be breathed in that can cause a uh, picture very, very similar to pulmonary fibrosis. There are certain infections that can involve the interstitial back. Um, tuberculosis sometimes can bear, sometimes fungal infection. So every now and then an infection can look a little bit like pulmonary fibrosis, although usually people with infections have fevers and other symptoms that sort of go more with that. 
different types of cancer. This is unusual, but every now and then a cancer will spread through the interstitium of the lungs instead of forming a ball within the lungs. And then some very rare things at the bottom that can happen. So there are all different types of things that